In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the modal draw layout from Jetpack Compose. Um, we're not going to be taking a look at how to set up Jetpack Compose or really dive into what Jetpack Compose is. If you're not familiar with those kind of things yet, then it'd be worth taking a look at the official documentation to do so. So following on from the last video, um, the last video we looked at the top app bar. If you haven't seen that yet, maybe check it out. Um, when you have app bars in your um, application, it's quite likely sometimes that you'll have a navigation drawer, um, which is usually opened by the hamburger menu. And in that video, we actually added a navigation icon in the form of a hamburger icon to our top app bar. Um, when that top app bar icon is clicked or um, the screen is dragged from the side, sometimes we show a navigation drawer. Um, currently in our Android applications where we're using XML layouts, we have a drawer layout uh, as the parent container in our XML layout. And this contains both the menu for the drawer as well as the body of our screen. When it comes to Jetpack Compose, whilst we're not actually writing our layout file inside of an XML and we're um, composing our layout, this kind of the way that we set up our drawer is actually very similar in um, in the way it, that we're currently doing it. And um, we have we create a draw layout, we um, give that draw layout a, a menu, and we give that draw layout a body. Except this time we're composing it using Jetpack Compose, and this is using a component called the Modal Draw Layout. And in this video, we're going to take a very practical approach, get stuck in, and and build one of these um, for ourselves. So. To begin with, uh, the most important part is the modal draw layout. So we're going to go ahead and add a modal draw layout to our uh, material theme body. So before we go ahead and start um, adding these uh, arguments to the constructor, we're going to jump in and have a quick look at the source just to see what's going on underneath the hood. So inside this draw KT file, there's actually uh, two composable functions. There is uh, the bottom draw layout, which we'll cover in another video and the modal draw layout, which is what we're gonna focus on today. So not, not too much to look at. And as we can see from looking at this, there's five um, arguments that this uh, composable function takes. So let's just run through those quickly. Uh, we have the draw state. So the draw state can actually be one of two states. So um, it can be open or closed, and this is reflected by an enum class, um, which is also in the same file. So when the drawer is opened by the user, this state will be opened, and once the drawer is closed, it will be reflected by that closed state. So um, this is a required uh, argument, and it must be passed in when you're building the composable. So we also have the on state change, and this is a lambda that is going to be uh, triggered or invoked whenever um, the draw state changes. So if the draw is opened, then this lambda will be triggered with the draw state open value and vice versa for closed. Um, so this is going to be used for keeping keeping everything in sync when it comes to the state of the draw. And next we have jest is enabled. Um, this is actually an optional argument in the composable function. Um, this defaults to true and you don't need to pass it if you don't want to change that. But what this basically means is that uh, whether or not the user can swipe open the drawer by dragging the side of the screen um, as well as clicking on the navigation icon. So if you don't want those gestures to be enabled, you can pass in a false value for this. Um, there are maybe some conditions when you want to be able to do this. Um, Maybe you only want to allow gestures once the drawer is opened, or maybe uh, the, there's been an error loading the screen or logging the user in, and you don't want the user to be able to, be able to open the drawer. Um, so um, th those can be cases where you may pass in something there. Uh, it really depends on the application. Um, we also have the drawer content and the body content. So just like I said before, where we pass in um, currently in Android, we have our XML layout and we have the menu and the body content. And this is kind of the same approach here. So. For the drawer content, we can pass in a composable, and that contains the content that we wish to display in the drawer itself. So whether it's like a header, menu items, whatever you're using the drawer for. And then we also have the body content, which is going to be the content of our actual screen. So maybe you'll have a, a column with a, a list of content. Um, maybe you'll have image views and, and so on, um, whatever it is you're displaying on that screen at that time. And that will likely be stuff that's going to change as the user navigates through things. Um, so that's really cool. So a, a, as the user maybe selects items in the drawer, you'll maybe recompose the, la the modal draw layout, and then the body content will change um, dependent on that. So it's a, a really nice way of dealing with that. So if we um, jump back into our main activity and away from this um, draw KT file. So as I said, we've got four required arguments we need to pass into this modal draw layout. And um, one thing we're going to tackle first is this draw state, because 
we need to pass in uh, a default state uh, of our draw as well as um, use that state for as when the state changes um, when the draw is open and closed. So I don't want to go too much into a state object in this video because that's probably going to need a whole video of itself. So if you haven't used it before, Jetpack Compose comes with a composable state function. Um, so we use a state where we wish to keep a reference to some locally, locally mutable state, but we also want it to be part of our UI composition. So if that state changes, we're going to want to recompose our layout. So this is incredibly helpful for um, when things change in our data, um, even such as the draw state, and we want to recompose stuff. So as I mentioned before, maybe maybe the draw closes and you want to recompose the UI, or maybe the user selects something and you want to close the draw and the users change the navigation item, and then we want to redraw the content of our body. Um, so when creating a state, we can actually deconstruct it into two separate fields. Um, so one is being the representation of the actual state itself. Oh, forgot my braces. Um, actual state itself. And then the second is going to be a lambda that we're going to trigger whenever the state is changed. So we'll call this state change. So um, this will basically represent our current state. And then when our state changes, so when the user opens or closes a draw, we need to trigger this lambda so that the state can be updated. And all we're going to do is going to create on call our state state function there and um, I'll just jump into this so we can see the source so we have a mutable state um, mutable state has a value um, you can retrieve that um, by the first deconstructed field and then the second one is used as a lambda to change uh, the state of that so we hop back in and we're gonna when, when you instantiate the state uh, you pass in uh, a default value during initialization so we're gonna just have it to be closed because when a user opens the application, our drawer is closed by default. So for basically with these two deconstructed fields, we're going to pass in the first one for the draw state. And then for the second one, we're going to pass in state changed. Um, so remember, draw state is the current state of our draw. And on state change is something that's going to be triggered whenever our state changes. And the value of that will be passed to that lambda. So um, when the drawer is by default, the drawer is closed, this is going to be closed. And whenever this changes, maybe it will pass in draw state opened. This will update the state. The state will then change and our layout will be recomposed to reflect uh, that difference. Um, if the state doesn't change, so if this is closed and we pass in closed, then our UI will not be recomposed, which is a really nice and efficient way of approaching it. So for the next part, we need to pass in our draw content um, and also the body content. So we'll start with the body content just because in the last video, we created the top app bar. And all we're going to do is reuse um, what we created in the last video. So we have our top app bar, we have a title, we set the color and we have this navigation icon. So the only difference here is that I've added um, a function here that's passed in as an argument for the, the composable. And this is going to be triggered when the navigation icon is clicked. So what we're going to do here is pass in our body content argument. And for this, we're going to pass in our content composable. So um, for this, we just need to pass in our, an open draw argument. And this is going to be um, the lambda here, which is used to change the state. So we're going to trigger this. Like that and what we're going to do is we're going to trigger our state change and pass in the draw state open so whenever um this state change is being triggered from the body content it's always going to be the case in this situation that um the user is opening the draw uh, maybe that will differ but in this situation we're always going to trigger the draw, draw state being opened so now um yeah so remember this lambda passing in the new state um will set this state object, which will um, cause these to be uh, uh, changed. So other than that, we just need to pass in the draw content. So this is actually going to be the content of our draw itself. Uh, and again, um, to save some time and not go off track, I've uh, created a little composable function for our app draw, which is basically just a single clickable text item, which is going to be used to close the draw. Um, again, not going to go too much into each of these here, but we have um, 
yeah, a clickable text that will ripple when it's clicked. Uh, and in this function, we're passing in uh, um, a closed draw. So for this, um, this argument, basically, whenever this text is clicked, this um, is going to be triggered. And then we can essentially do the same that we're doing with our content. So what I'm going to do here is pass in our app draw composable. And we're going to do the same thing that we're doing with the content. Um, we're going to change the state. Uh, state changed, except this time we're going to pass in our closed state because that is whenever the users in the app draw and um, triggering that. Um, in this situation, we're always going to be closing the draw. So um, yeah, so with that in place, uh, we've kind of got um, kind of got what we need there. Um, our, we've got our draw content, we've got our body content, and we can uh, we're observing the state changes and and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that just so we can have a little play of it and see how it's operating. Um, other than that, while that's building, the only other thing that we can do um, with this mobile draw layout, as previously mentioned, is the gestures enabled. So the gestures enabled allows us to control whether or not the user can use gestures to handle the draw. Um, before we do that, we can just have a quick play. We can see here, oh, here's our draw. Um, we can click the navigation icon. We can click to close and because Jess is enabled we yeah there we go <laughs> it's tricky on an emulator and we can also I had it a minute ago we can also drag out using gestures so that's really cool and yeah we can see there that things are working great cool so other than that um yeah I was talking about the gestures enabled so let's have a quick look so Jess is enabled let's just disable it for now um just so we can see um exactly how that's going to affect the experience. Um, once that's rebuilt, we can, yep. So here we can see that we can still click to close and do stuff, but I can't, I can't actually uh, drag things. So I can't drag the drawer to close it. I can click to close it and I can't drag the drawer to open it either. That's because we've disabled it in our application. So again, there may be specific use cases where you want to uh, enable and disable that. Um, not something that I'm going to do here, um, but yeah, the options there we need it. So in this video, we've taken a quick look and a practical, a practical look at how to build a modal draw out in our application. Um, plenty of use cases and a lot of applications use draw layouts and um, these are navigation drawers. So I imagine a lot of apps are going to utilize this in Jetpack Compose and it's a really nice approach to being able to handle it. Like I said, state changes, uh, maybe the user click something inside of the app draw content and um, which causes a state change and then the body content can re-render based on the selected navigation icon things like that um, are going to be uh, really nice to work with so yeah i'm looking forward to using this in some apps but yeah any questions leave them in the comments um, there's a supporting blog post for this in the video description and yeah i look forward to to seeing um, how you use this in your applications and yeah until next time see you later